gosh, I cannot believe that NASCAR just can't seem to get over it. I don't understand why they can't seem to get it over. Can't seem to let the ball go. You know, okay, this is getting a little NASCAR. But this Jeremy Mayfield bullshit. Seriously, I'm f***ing sick and tired of this bullshit. If I hear any more about this with Mayfield and his drug antics, if you will, I'm going to stick a 9-inch boot right up your You hear me, NASCAR? I hope you do. I'm sick of this crap, and I'm not playing games of you at NASCAR. Get your heads out of your It's like you're laying eggs in there. You could be laying the world's largest egg, about the size of Mount Rushmore. If J-May did this meth deal ten years ago, he shouldn't be having a pretty boy face. It should look a bit more worn out than usual, which is what meth does. But you people in NASCAR can't proof about how it happened, why it happened, or just what. And that pisses me off. If you're telling us in front of the whole entire freaking world that Jeremy Mayfield did this, and you can't prove it, you're lying to me. You are lying in front of my face. And I am tired of it. I thought you people at NASCAR knew better, but apparently you don't. F*** that, NASCAR. You don't know. You don't know everything. You know some things, but you don't know everything better than us. You don't know anything better than us. Because of your reckless that you got going on, that's it. That was the last straw. You guys at NASCAR can't figure this crap out? Well, too bad. That's your own fault, not mine. Son of a bitch, I'm sick of hearing this shit. You know, I wish I could just sit in there and have five minutes with the head officials of NASCAR and just wring their freaking necks and say, Hey guys, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. If you're giving Jeremy Mayfield all this rap and he has to quit racing because of this. What a bunch of worthless from all the NASCAR PR people. Stalin and Hitler would be very proud that NASCAR has shelved this mess in. I think you've done Stalin and Adolf Hitler proud, NASCAR. Thanks a lot. Jeremy Mayfield, NASCAR, the big lawsuit that's going on there. And it's just, I don't know, it keeps coming back up in the news. You think it's gone, it's back, it's gone, it's here. It's, it's, it's just amazing. And, Bob, I want you to talk about that. Now what is going on in the world of Jeremy Mayfield and NASCAR? Well, about a month ago, uh, a, judge, a federal judge in Charlotte uh, dismissed all Jeremy's claims. And so now they, Jeremy has started bring that up process a process with attorney Mark Garagos, who he had hired about six months ago, and uh, their first step is to ask the judge to Thanks, reconsider his decision and reverse it. That's a pretty standard uh, request, and it typically is denied, but it allows you then to go forward with more appeals. Yeah, and that's where I think this is heading. I think there's going to be a, uh, an appeal put in place. I can't see him even reconsidering what, you know, the that usually never happens, correct? Yeah, usually it never happens, and, uh, you know, and Jeremy really has, you know, he put so much effort into it, you, you might as well appeal this decision because, uh, you know, they've gone through a, a, a while, you know, a year now worth of litigation, and the judge just dismissed it based on kind of everything submitted with no real uh, hearings recently or, or anything else. So, you know, if, if Jeremy can keep the case alive, it's in his best interest, and so, you know, it won't cost him all that much to, to do a quick appeal. So I think that's where you're headed. Well, we're talking to Bob Pockris, Rob Tomiko, race day on Fox as we get you up the grid. Uh, we're talking about the Jeremy Mayfield NASCAR lawsuit. Uh, what has NASCAR said about, if anything, about this? They really haven't said too much. I mean, I think they probably expected it. Um, you know, NASCAR actually countersued Jeremy um, for breach of contract, saying that, you know, he fraudulently raced by uh, violating the substance abuse policy. So that part of the suit technically is still alive, and because that is Kind of still out there that could possibly two minutes delay left, two some minutes. appeals. Uh, you know, we'll just have to see. Now, what is the end, end game out of this thing? Is there's not really a winner in this situation, is there? <laughs> no, I mean, I think you know, Jeremy feels that he's been wronged, and you know, to, in this country, when you feel you've been wronged, you sue and you hope to get some money out of it. I mean, I don't think Jeremy thinks that he'll ever get to race again in NASCAR. He's already been out for a year. Um, 
any appeals and everything will take much longer. So, but you know, I mean, that's the way we, you know, in, that's the way we we handle things. And you know, and if uh, uh, the courts believe that he has been wrong, then he'll he'll get he'll get some money and some compensation for being wrong. All of the stuff you guys have heard in parts one, two, and everything in part three up to this point was about one of the most controversial situations ever in the NASCAR world. Everything you have heard are the opinions and views of news people, people in NASCAR's pocketbook, fans radio DJs, etc, etc. This thing with Mayfield versus NASCAR is becoming more out of control than you guys think, and can have some severe consequences. Sure, NASCAR's drug testing policy has kind of gotten better, but what will happen in the end? Not many have considered that option. It's too obvious that NASCAR will do whatever it takes to prove to everyone that Jeremy is wrong, even if NASCAR itself is in the wrong. Though many people have compared this to that of the Tim Richmond scenario long ago, there is another driver who got suspended that I compare this scenario to. Because of his fate, I fear for Jeremy Mayfield's well-being and life. For those of you who believe that Jeremy is a drug addict and think my fear of him dying is by an overdose of meth or something like that, get me wrong. This is something I must address, because this is something I've been fearing about for a long while. Let me take a couple of minutes to recap this thing at the point of this movie. On May 9th, Jeremy Mayfield gets suspended for supposedly failing a drug test with two other crew members. Mayfield explains that an over-counter medicine and prescription medication made the test a false positive. NASCAR said that was not the case. Mayfield launches a lawsuit saying NASCAR messed up. Speculation ensues as what the mystery drug was. About a month later, reports that it was methamphetamine. Here it'll be referred to as meth. Mayfield wins an injunction, NASCAR wants Mayfield to take a drug test, can't locate him, Mayfield takes one test, NASCAR comes to his house to get a test of his own, Mayfield gets another test done, NASCAR says theirs was positive for meth, Mayfield says both of his were negative, Jeremy's stepmother Lisa gets involved saying Jeremy used meth since 1998, Jeremy gets mad saying Lisa killed his father, Terry, and she was paid by NASCAR to lie. NASCAR wins an appeal, an injunction is removed from play, Mayfield's not happy, other things happen and the case is thrown out. Mayfield appeals. The only other things of note from Mayfield since the beginning of the appeal in 2010 is that a slender suit between him and Lisa was settled as long as Jeremy apologized to Lisa, and a non-related incident with a male postal worker in which Jeremy's pet pitbulls end up euthanized. This rage up between Jeremy Mayfield and the evils of NASCAR is known here as the Mayfield Massacre. Many people on the Topics website knows that. For those of you who don't know why it is called the Mayfield Massacre, it is because of my fear of the ending of this case. To understand my fear, I must explain a previous issue. Three days before the Mayfield Massacre began, word got out that a former driver was found dead in a hotel room. The driver's name was Kevin Grubb. His death on May 6, 2009 was ruled a suicide by a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Like with the death of one of my game show six, Ray Combs, whose death was also a suicide, I decided to get more info on Kevin's death to attempt to figure out, in my mind, what happened. And I think I have. Because of that and everything Jeremy Mayfield has been through, I fear for him. Now with that in mind, what I will do here is end part three of the series, and then you guys can go to part four to learn about why I fear for Mayfield and why Kevin Grubb's death instilled that fear, and why you guys should be worried about Mayfield as well, and what I'm hoping to do to get you guys to also help out Mayfield in every sense of the word. Please tune in to part four of this series in order to understand everything, and why I have made this series to begin with.